Hi everyone, I'm Andre. I'm a soldier here at Junior at Apple. And also I am the co-chair of Automel Training Working Group in Kubeflow. I'm Jono, a staff engineer at Nutanix, uh, leading efforts in training and automal uh, in Kubeflow. Um, today we will be presenting on how to build automal pipelines with Argo workflows and CATIP. So before diving into the main topic, we'll just talk about general automated machine learning area or AutoML in short. So this main area has, um, it's very vast and has lots of research happening. And it can be considered as, uh, as like multiple subdomains. Um, uh, for example, hyperparameter optimization or HP tuning, neural architecture search or NAS, feature engineering, model compression, uh, data preparation and data validation part. So um, when we consider uh, from a components point of view, um, we could think as like multiple components. So one is the main configuration space. So when we talk about configuration, uh, different configurations, extending from what we have discussed in the previous slide, uh, the feature engineering domain uh, deals with features, hyperparameter tuning deals with hyperparameters, neural architecture search deals with uh, model architectures, right? And once we have uh, training data passed on to this, um, uh, new metrics are uh, uh, emitted from models based on the configuration that we have passed on. And using these metrics, uh, optimizers uh, based on each environment, right? Like it creates uh, new configurations and this loop continues till some success criteria is formed. So that is the main, uh, the core, the AutoML field. And the end result is you would basically get a, a well-optimized ML model. So coming to CATIP, um, so th that's the, the, the main uh, focus uh, in this talk. So it's a Kubernetes native open source project for general AutoML needs. And this is like one of the core uh, Kubeflow component. Um, so it can be deployed independent uh, from uh, the, the main Kubeflow installation, or it, it's by default, it is tied with the Kubeflow, uh, the main deployment. Um, from all the domains that we have talked about in AutoML, it supports hyperparameter tuning, neural architecture search with early stopping mechanism. And out of box, it supports almost all popular uh, AutoML algorithms. Uh, for example, Bayesian, Hyperband, uh, TP, CMA, et cetera. And the platform is very extensible uh, in the sense that users can uh, deploy um, uh, on custom AutoML algorithm uh, during runtime without even restarting the deployment. And CATIP is agnostic to ML framework and programming languages, which means um, user can, user is free to write uh, uh, code in any programming language or ML framework, say whether it is TensorFlow, Python, or Scikit, or XtBoost, or whatever it is. And it, since it is Kubernetes native, it takes advantage of the underlying Kubernetes infrastructure. So, but, so it is portable. So it can be deployed uh, on prem or on cloud or in the hybrid nature mode. And we can basically tune any custom resource in Kubernetes using uh, CATIP. And since it is baked with Kubeflow, it also uh, supports um, advanced training uh, configurations like distributed training uh, through Kubeflow operators like um, the, uh, the Kubeflow, the PyTorch operator or the uh, TensorFlow operator. So by default, you, 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 you can use that or you can basically deploy it uh, total, uh, totally independent from the Kubeflow installation. So this is one very high level uh, cat tip architecture. So from a user point of view, he creates an experiment uh, in the form of a spec or a standard Kubernetes manifest um, uh, like a YAML for in YAML format. And the experiment controller, uh, which is responsible for the experiment customer resource, picks it up 
and create suggestion uh, custom resource. The suggestion controller, looking at the user uh, spec, uh, figures out which is the algorithm that uh, that user is interested in. It talks to the right algorithm service and provides uh, produces a set of hyperparameters. Now, against each set of hyperparameters, the trial controller um, uh, creates trials. Um, and you could think trial as a worker job. So this can be distributed in case of uh, a distributed training, or it can be a single pod training as well. So uh, each trial produces metrics, um, which we have talked about in the earlier slide. Right, which is the evaluation metrics, and they are stored in an external metrics DB. The experiment controller looks at uh, th these metrics and figures out whether the experiment has to be continued or not. Um, so in, in short, the experiment or the optimization loop continues till your success criteria is met or uh, the use of budget is satisfied. And it contain, once it is once it is completed, user gets to know the best hyperparameters for that experiment, and this can be used for finding the best model out of that. On to Andre for uh, the Argo workflow integration part. Thank you, Jonna. So before jumping to uh, implementation, how we use Argo workflow in KDIP, I just want to briefly talk about what is Argo workflow. So basically, it's the container-oriented orchestrated system built on top of Kubernetes, and I would say like it's de facto platform uh, which widely used across all the industries, and especially in Kubeflow, we're already using Argo in Kubeflow pipelines and KDE. And for us, it's very important to find the orchestrating tool to be able to run out more jobs, uh, because in the next um, slides, I will explain you how we integrating this internally in our infrastructure. Um, so Argo has a lot of different projects that uh, under uh, using uh, Argo underneath, and it's very powerful to be able to run this workflow engine um, inside other CRDs. So speaking about KDIP integration, uh, so on the previous architecture diagram, as you can see, like we uh, our trials spawns the workers, and since we uh, trying to build uh, the architecture itself um, by providing the abstractions on top of the worker. Our users can deploy almost everything um, which has the specific states. And uh, in this particular example, we can integrate Argo workflows directly to our uh, trials jobs and users be able to run uh, their training code inside the one Argo workflow. So why it is actually useful for us? Because by using, by running training job as the Argo workflow, we can just perform really co complex ML pipelines inside a training job we can, our users can do like the pre-processing step, post-processing step. Also, they can like train the model in a multiple different ways. For example, it's very useful in the multi-object object optimization. And also since Argo like provides a great UIs and great artifact tracking, users can also track the metrics results and analyze them in the different various workflows. It's also like very uh, efficient if you need to like train your model on a different data set on the different like volume resources. And all of this can be easily integrated inside KDP infrastructure and just analyzing the results and making your hyperparameter optimization. So speaking about integration steps, how you can integrate Argo workflows inside KDP. It's very straightforward. Before I can just explain you, I just want to say that any command CRD can be implemented in KDP as long as this CRD can create the pod and also can allow uh, allows you to inject the sidecars because our metrics collector is just a sidecar container. And also your CRD has a succeed or failure status. So as Jonah mentioned before, this CRD can be like everything. We have an examples for job job, Python job. So all of the Kubeflow training distributed training operators and also have an example for a Tecton pipeline or Argo workflow. Uh, because Kubernetes job sometimes does not fit all of your needs uh, if you want to run your training pipeline. And if you want to integrate the Argo flow inside Kdip, you just need to simply update your container arguments inside your Kdip controller. And also you should update the Kdip controller for fast roll airbag to be able to give the particular access for Kdip controller and to be able to reconcile the Argo workflow resources. So after just updating this step, you just need to restart your Kdip controller 
And after that, you can easily integrate Argo workflow inside your creative experiment. And think about how you, speaking about how you going to define your Argo flow in your creative experiment, we have an API called child template, where our users usually define the child template and define all of the APIs that's required to run this template during the experiment run. So in this template, user have to define four different APIs. So the first is primary pod labels, which identify uh, the pod and identify the labels of the pod, which matrix collect collector will be in injected. Because imagine like you in uh, uh, in the Argo workflow, for example, you can have uh, two different pods and each pod can do a different um, workflow operation, like preprocessing step and actual training. So our matrix collector should needs to be injected injected only in the training step and i will show you this in the demo as well and also like in the primary container name you need to define the the name of the container which the matrix collector needs uh, will be wrapped and also the success and failure condition in the json format and this condition when your resources met this condition uh controller will automatically reconcile this customer source during during the experiment run and speaking about how actually users define the Argo workflow inside experiment spec, we have the trial spec API. And here users can define the whole workflow inside their experiment. And if you're familiar with Argo workflow, this is very simple workflow that we're going to use. I'm going to show you this in the demo. So in this workflow, we have two simple steps. So the first one is pre-processing, where it's just we simply print the random value um, and just uh, getting this value by, uh, by, by randomly dividing the 6,000 on 10 and 100. And then we're getting this value and just pushing it to the next step, which is more extra model training. And we can see in this example that uh, we have the output parameter from the first step. So this one and the input parameter from our actually optimization algorithm. So it's, it's learning rate. So we're going to pass the learning rate from KDIP algorithm. And also we're going to pass the number of examples from our previous step. And these two steps, we're going to run our, so each trial are going to run the whole workflow, which has like these two different steps. And we're going to use this example in our, like in our demo. So yeah, uh, and with that, I just want to jump to the demo and just to show you how you can easily run the Argo workflows inside KDIP experiment. Uh, so I'm going to use exactly the same experiment as I defined to you. Uh, so this is the this is the example that we're going to use. I just want to copy that to our front end. So this is the KDP UI that we have. So our users can define a new experiment. Uh, so the experiments, uh, so they can define all of the APIs by using these UIs, such as metadata, trial threshold. So for example, how many trials they want to run with parallel? What is the maximum number of trials? What is the maximum number of failed trials? Also, very important users can define the objective where they just uh, specify which metrics they want to optimize and what kind of additional metrics they want to collect. So in this particular example, we're going to tune the validation accuracy. In the meantime, we're going to collect uh, train accuracy from our training process. Uh, so this is the search algorithms. As Jonah mentioned, we support like a lot of like novel automatic algorithms here. Uh, users can easily define them uh, based on their needs. Also, they can specify the early stopping techniques. Um, and this is the hyperparameters that the users also can specify. They can change the domain, the search space definition, the different types of hyperparameters. Um, and also like, this is the metrics collector where users can uh, use the different APIs for metrics collector, how they want to analyze the metrics from the training process. Uh, and this is the trial template. So it's, again, it's, uh, this is the very important. And I just explained you how users can use the trial template API to be able to just define the Argo workflow inside the experiment run. So we're going to pass the whole YAML inside uh, this edit form. And we're going to change only the maximum number of trials to eight. And we're going to use two trials in parallel. So again, as I mentioned before, each trial just running the Argo workflow and we're going to run two trials in parallel. So two Argo workflows in parallel for each uh, evaluation run. So after creating the experiment, user can click create. We can see the status of experiment. If we jump to another namespace, we can analyze other, other user, user's experiment. Um, so this is the optimal trial that the users can also like analyze and understand the best hyperparameters. Um, 
they can click to the experiment, view some results, but we're going to back to this later. So if we jump to Argo namespace, our experiment currently creating, um, and we're going to jump to the terminal to just analyze the results from our experiment run. So in my namespace, currently I'm running the Argo workflow container, uh, sorry, Argo workflow controller, which is basically reconcile all of the workflows and also the KDIP controller and the UIs for Argo and KDIP. So first of all, we wanna check the trials. So once experiment is creating, two trials also have been created and they're currently in the running state. And we also can um, check the, uh, the workflows in the Argo namespace. So as we can see here, the two trials have been created and two workflows also have been created. So if we describe, if we're going to describe one of the trials, we are going to see the some of the interesting results. So here we can see the learning rate. This is generating by our KDIP algorithm, and we're using just a random algorithm here. Um, but we only tune learning rate as I mentioned before, and we can check the pods. So in, inside our Argo Argo namespace, we see that. Each workflow creates two different pods. So the first pod is data processing pod, and the second pod is actual model training. And we, so, if we're going to analyze the results, for example, from like from this trial, um, first of all, we can check the the logs from our preprocessing step. So our preprocessing step just generating the value like 150, uh, uh, one hundred one one five three eight. We're going to pass this this value to the second step, which is actual model model training, um, and this value is being used during the training run, and also we pass the learning rate uh, inside our training job. So this is the simple MNIST example, just a simple um, CNN model, and during the train run after the training is finished, we just our matrix matrix collector actually parse all these results and send them to the DB. To make the new prediction and the new actually uh, generating new hyperparameters, and which is very cool. Like since we're using Argo underneath under our trial job, we can use all of the richness of the Argo, like all of the features from Argo workflows. For example, we can jump to the Argo UI, and we can analyze all this workflow, how they're running, what is the how the value passed between the workflows, what is the current status. And also we can jump to the particular workflow to see the whole of the steps. So as I mentioned, this is a very simple two-step workflow, uh, but we can analyze the input parameters, output parameters. We can just check the logs. Um, and of course you can like, you can define very sophisticated workflow here. You can have a different volumes, which your workflow will be using. And you can, again, as I mentioned before, uh, you can have like the multiple training uh, training optimization during your uh, like hyper running tuning up, uh, run. You can check the manifest uh, from from this UI, uh, so you can see that learning rate just was generated and was substituted by Argo by by KDIP controller. Um, and we need to wait until all of the workflows will be finished, uh, because all of the trials also will be finished, and then we can just see the results. So if, we, if we're going to jump to the KDP UI, here our users can analyze the experiment run, they can see the, the experiment name, their current status, the best trial, the current best hyperparameters, um, some information about running trials, some information about experiment conditions, for example, if they're going to click to the trial page, here they can see the, all of the trials, all of the statuses of the trials, and uh, what is the best trial? We're also highlighting them for the user. Uh, so as you can see, like it's automatically adding new and new trials and users also can click to the trial to see the, uh, the metrics that our metrics collector um, just parsed from the training from, from the training step. And again, since we just uh, getting only two metrics, we see like the validation accuracy and training accuracy in this, in this graph. Um, so depends on the depends on the results, the best hyper hyperparameters are generated. And if you click to the details, you're going to see like more detailed information about the experiment. And of course, if you're like familiar with Kubernetes, you can always like uh, see the whole YAML for the experiment run uh, for the more detailed information. Uh, so again, this is a very simple example, but it's very powerful because using Argo in KDIP 
has a lot of advantages, as I mentioned before. And users can definitely like define the very sophisticated uh, workflows inside the optimization step. And it helps a lot for us to make some, like, um, again, some multi-objective optimization, which just a simple distributed, distributed front doesn't supporting. So it's very efficient. And uh, it has a lot of like potential in case of like op uh, in case of uh, hyperparameter optimization. So once the experiment is finished, we can see the best the best trial, which is generating this learning rate, and uh, users can just take this learning rate and uh, put them in the um, uh, in the final model and just push this model to production. So this is a very simple example that I really want to show you how you can easily integrate uh, the Argo workflows in KDP. And again, as I said, like it has a lot of potential. Uh, and it's like in a very like in a very early stage of adopting the uh, workflows inside automal experiments. Uh, and just before we wrap up, I really want to mention some very important things about community. So all of this would not be possible without our great community. And I really encourage you to follow this guide to run this uh, Argo workflow examples um, by yourself. Inside, you can even use the your local kind cluster. You don't need any on-premise on or like public um, cloud to be able to run this example. Uh, if you want to like join our regular meetings, please feel free to check these links from Argo Flow and Kedip. We have like regular regular meetings. Also, you can check our GitHub repositories. And if you want to, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us in the Slack channel. We have the Qflow Slack channel. We have the Argo Flow Slack channel. So I'm gonna happy to uh, like to answer any of your questions. And if you're using Kedip, please update, uh, uh, update the adopter list. We really want to have the interaction with our customers to just understand the, um, the problems that we have in our current infrastructure. And if you want to contribute, please check the developer's guide, the, our issues with this label. You can also submit your proposal. Um, and if you want to learn more about Kelly, please feel free to check our presentation list. And with that, thank you so much for listening to us. We're more than happy to answer all of your questions. Um, Thank you.